Hello everyone, and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where experts provide in-depth explanations and answers to your Pro Tools questions. And as always, we are joined by the wonderful Anders Motz, who is a Pro Tools Master Instructor from Tong Craftwork, an avid learning partner in Austria. And also hello, hello. Of, hello. And we are also joined by An Andy Hagerman. How's it going, Andy? Are you good? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm very good. Uh, you're looking slightly different today. Yeah. Really? In, in, in what way? Uh, have you lost weight? I have, actually. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, and if, if you didn't know, Andy Hagerman is also a master instructor and uh, author of many a uh, tome and book on Pro Tools. So uh, in, in short, these guys know what they're doing. And uh, if you don't know who I am, last and probably definitely least, I'm Alex Brook. I'm here to help host the show and put people's Pro Tools questions to Anders and Andy, uh, hopefully so you can provide some answers and maybe clear up some confusion that a lot of people have with Pro Tools. So welcome to the show and uh, good to see you guys again. How, how, how's it going? What's, go what's, what's new? It's going well. It's starting to get a little cooler over here in Japan, so that's nice. Yeah doing good over here in Austria as well nice, uh, and nice. it's uh, so great to see you without the beard I was used to it but uh, look great man <laughs> you know apparently nobody in Japan for the four years that I had that beard liked it <laughs> So, and my, and, and especially what, your wife, I guess. And my wife, when I asked my wife, should I keep it or not? She answered so fast. It was the quickest answer to any question I've ever asked. Her. She answered it before you, you, you even put the yeah, question. Before I was even done. Yep. So that's gone. Yeah. So it's gone. And, and no one even gave you a hint that they didn't like the beard for years and no! years. No. For years, nobody said anything. <laughs> I oh, like the beer. I like it. It's too. very good. It's very good. <laughs> well, gentlemen, to business. All right. Um, we yeah. we we went a scouring of the interwebs to find an interesting question or topic to talk for for you guys to talk about, and we actually didn't find a question. We actually found a uh, a feature request, and essentially what that feature request was was related to groups. The feature request was: I want to be able to click on a track and see which group it's a member of. And this is a really interesting topic. Obviously, you guys are going to expound on this, but it's interesting it was a feature request because it assumes that it wasn't a, you know, a function in Pro Tools already. So what, what do you think, guys? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think this uh, is like most of the free feature requests out there. Right. Uh, it's already in, in sure, Pro Tools, sure, actually. Sure. And I, I think that's one of maybe one of the reasons why the idea scale was dropped, because there were so many requests for features that are already in Pro mm. Tools. But it's a bit of a like half hidden feature. So, uh, or Andy, what would you say? It's it it's definitely Pro Tools hieroglyphics, <laughs> yeah. right? So um, if you don't know how to uh, you know, interpret the signs, you'll never you'll never guess what's going on. But once you once you see it once, it will make all the sense in the world, and it's really exactly what that person was asking about. Um, and so I think Anders, you've got a session that shows this pretty well, right? Yeah, I'm right now in the mix window. This also works in the edit window as long as you've got the left side here visible. If you don't, maybe you've hidden it on this tiny little button here where you can get rid of the left sidebar. So make sure that's visible in both of your windows because that will make your life easier. Right now I've got this session here with a couple of tracks and a couple of groups. And none of the tracks are currently selected, as you can see. But as soon as I select one of these tracks, and let me go for one of the drum tracks, you will see something happening in the groups list on the left side here. You see this little ring here in the drums group, but also in the all group. Andy, how would you explain that? Yeah, so we've got an empty circle next to two of the groups. Now, the first group is the all group. The all group always includes all of the tracks. That one is pretty immutable. Yeah, you can't get rid of that group. It's always in every session, yeah. You can't get rid of it, can't change it too much. Um, and there's also a circle 
by the drums group. Now that's telling me something. That tells me that that track is a member of the drums group. There's a circle by it. So that specific track is a member of the drums group. So if you if you clicked on track number 12. Uh, track number 12 is this one. Now you can see the guitar group has a circle. Now, what does that circle mean, Anders? Yeah, uh, so the circle means that one of the members or more, but not all of the members of the guitars group is currently selected. So do me a favor and select all of the members of the guitar group. So I'll go ahead and click on one of these and select all of them. And then I've actually got one of the subs over here as well, which is called the guitar sub. And if I select that, I've now got all of the members of this group selected. Now, something interesting has happened. We have some members, but not all, of the all group. So that's the empty circle. The dot by the guitar group saying that all members of that group are selected, but no more. And we've also got a circle by the subs group, meaning that one of those tracks is a member of two groups. And of course, that one's probably going to be that subs track that you've got there over on the right side of your mixer. Now, Anders, there's got to be a simpler way, a one-click way mm. of being able to select a group. And I want you to, in a single click, yep. select all the members, but no more, of the keys group. Okay. What you will do then is in the area here on the left side where the dots and the rings are visible, just click in there and that will select all of the members of that group. Great. So now I've got these keyboards and synths tracks and the keyboards submaster over here. And again, one of those tracks is a member of two groups. Do me a favor. Let's go ahead and find out what tracks are in that subgroups. Now, right now, it only has an open circle. But if you click that open circle, yep. now you've selected all members of that group and we can see that there are five members of that group, all the yellow tracks. And interestingly enough, all the rest of the groups have circles, which means that some of those groups are selected, but not all members of that group are selected. All the information you could possibly want is right there at your fingertips if you know how to decode it. Anders, what's next? Yeah, we've covered the circles and we've covered the dots, but there is actually one more. So what happens if I select all of the members of a group and one additional track that isn't in the group. I'll just command click here on one of the vocal tracks. I now have all of the members of the submasters group and one of the members of some other group or outside of this group, and that will create the dot and the circle. That's what you can see in the groups list there. And so to recap, if you see a circle by a group, it means that some, but not all members of that group are selected. If you see a dot, by a group name, it means all members, but no others are selected. And if you see a dot plus a circle or that bullseye looking icon, it means that all members of that group are selected plus another track. Doesn't matter if those groups are active. In fact, none of those groups are active right now. Those groups don't have to be on in order to be able to see those hieroglyphics, to be able to see those symbols. But just to take this one step further, Anders, could you please activate the subs group and the drums group. Uh, so I can just click on the group I want to activate or press the letter key for that group. In this case, D for drums and S for subs. Uh, that's a great shortcut. I use that all the time. Now let's go over to the green drums track for a second, if you would please. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you'll see that right above the pan knob, it says drums. Why? Because it's a member of an active group right now, and that group is drums. There's a little disclosure triangle. What can you do with that, Anders? Uh, well, this is a great feature. If you've got an active group, you can click on this little disclosure and actually look at what group members are in there, in that group. So in this case, it will list all of the drums and the drum submaster, of course. You can also modify and duplicate and, and delete uh, tracks here. You can select the tracks in the group. So basically do the same operation as clicking in the column where the dots and circles are. Or you can hide tracks in the groups. Or this one is great, show only tracks in group, which will display only these tracks and none others. Now, could you please show all the tracks again from the tracks list? Mm -hmm. Great. Those tracks are a member of only one group. 
Go over to that drum subs track, if you would, please. And that is a member of two groups. It's a member of the drums group and it's a member of the subs group. And I know that it's a member of more than one group. Why? Uh, because of the case of the letter before the drums group. In this case, you've got an uppercase D because this track is a member of multiple active groups, whereas the bass submaster next to it is a lowercase a because it's only a member of one active group. And if you click that bass subgroup, you'd see the members of that single group that it's a member of, that single active group that it's a member of. But that drum subgroup is a member of two active groups, and you're going to see something slightly different. There you go. You're going to see the drums group, and if you go up, you can see controls for that. But you can also see it for the subs group, and you can see the tracks that are there. So you have double the visibility, you double the control. If you're if, if a track is a member of three, four, five groups, then that disclosure triangle gives you progressively more information. Gentlemen, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was really interesting. I learned a lot about um, active and inactive groups, how to navigate groups and to see which tracks are members of the group. So that was that was really awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear viewer, we will actually be doing another show on groups where uh, Anders and Andy are going to teach you some cool tips and tricks. I will uh, let you wait to see that show when we release it. So please keep your eyes peeled on YouTube. Please remember to like and subscribe. And you can also check out our website at protoolsanswers.com. See you next time on Pro Tools Answers. Bye for now.